Hi there, and welcome to this video on AQA biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of immunity, and in particular, antigens and self-tolerance. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of six in this tutorial, covering antigen and self-tolerance. This is the first video in our series of six lessons on the topic of immunity. In the last lesson, we looked at cell structure and functions of cell membranes. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we'll be looking at the immune system, then at the principles of self and non-self. We'll also be looking at MHC proteins and central and peripheral tolerance. The immune system exists in many different forms across many different species. In this section, we'll focus on understanding the immune system found in most mammalian species. The immune system works through a system of recognition mechanisms. This enables it to distinguish native cells from pathogens and eliminate them. The immune system can be divided into two major mechanisms, innate and adaptive. Before we go into depth with the various parts of the immune system, we'll do a quick overview of the whole immune response to understand how everything fits into the puzzle. The innate system is the primary response and therefore it is non-specific. It involves lymphocytes, which use the process of phagocytosis to break down the pathogens. In contrast to this, the adaptive immune system is second line, which is more long-term. This is highly specific and involves antibodies. Now let's look at the primary immune response. The first step here is for the pathogen to enter the blood. After this, the body can detect the foreign antigens on the surface of the pathogens. And the neutrophils can break down the pathogens by phagocytosis. The macrophages found at the lymph nodes can carry out phagocytosis. Phagocytes are non-specific, which means they can engulf any kind of foreign organism, no matter what it is. Here's the whole of the primary response. Now let's move on to the secondary response. Here, the phagocytes will activate three types of T cells. The lymphocytes are specific for each type of antigen. Then, we have the B cells which will be activated by the T helper cells. These will produce the antibodies to break down the pathogens. The B cells then produce plasma cells, which in turn make more antibodies. Here's an overview of the secondary immune response. Let's just pause for a second. Can you remember all the steps in both the primary and the secondary immune response? We'll now look at the surface molecules that identify cells. The immune system will detect antigens in order to identify a cell. These are unique and specific to particular cells and pathogens. The majority of antigens found in pathogens do not exist in normal cells. Another important concept is that of self and non-self. The immune system won't want to attack the body's own cells as this can lead to autoimmune disorders. These can be fatal for an organism. Now let's look at MHC proteins. These are major histocompatibility complexes, which are used to distinguish the cells of the body from foreign bodies. 
This allows the immune system to attack only the foreign pathogens without harming the normal cells. There are two types of MHC cells, MHC1 and MHC2. MHC1 molecules are found on normal body cells, binding to endogenous antigens, which are normal antigens produced in normal cells. The antigens on the cell surface membrane will de be displayed as self cells to the immune system. These are also seen on immunological cells, which allows them to recognise and communicate with each other. The MHC2 molecules are found on immunological cells. They bind to foreign antigens to activate an immune response against a particular invading pathogen. The lymphocytes are able to recognise and tolerate self-antigens. Now let's look at clonal deletion. This is what happens when we delete immune cells that respond to self-antigens. Here are some perfect T and B cells. In an ideal world, both of these would not attack our self-cells, but would attack the non-self cells that appear in the body. However, if the T and B cells are harmful, they would attack both the self-cells and the non-self cells. If they were useless, then they wouldn't attack any kinds of cells at all. Now let's look at two mechanisms, central and peripheral tolerance. During maturation, all B cells and T cells will travel through a tissue matrix containing all the self antigens that can be found in the body. If a T cell or a B cell reacts with any self antigen, it's killed off via apoptosis or programmed cell death. This overall process is known as clonal deletion and it leaves immune cells which do not respond to self antigens. Peripheral tolerance is very similar to central tolerance, but occurs at a stage where the T cells and B cells are still immature. Clonal deletion removes the immature T and B cells, which respond to the self antigens. Here, we can see that any lymphocytes with a high affinity for self cells are destroyed. This is the process of clonal deletion, whereby the cells that respond to self-antigens have been destroyed. Clonal energy involves activating any immune cells that bypass clonal deletion. Autoimmune disorders are disorders in which the body's own immune system destroy its own tissues. These can be acute or chronic. There are long-term diseases which are relatively treatable, for example type 1 diabetes. Others can emerge suddenly and lead to the rapid deterioration of the organism, which can often have fatal results. The immune system responds to non-self and foreign pathogens. Sometimes, our immune systems can be counterproductive. Patients often need organ transplants, and the immune system of the host can immunologically reject the donor organ. The donor organ must closely match the immunological antigen profile of the recipient individual. It's important to understand that MHC genes, as well as other antigen genes, are different between individuals, except for identical twins. Foreign cells, even if they are human cells, can be recognised as non-self by the immune system. This causes the immune system to attack the foreign cells. We've now covered the learning objective for today's lesson. If there's anything you feel unsure about, feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch it. We've now completed Lesson 1. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.